to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide Buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Today we're going to talk about another thymosin peptide, one that's pretty popular and we'll see if that's for good reason. We're talking about thymosin alpha-1. We've already discussed the details of TB500, which is a fragment of TB4, thymosin beta-4, which I had some mixed opinions about. And although thymosin alpha-1 sounds like thymosin beta-4, and although they have been looked at in similar contexts, they are in fact quite different, so let's dive in. This is a story about a peptide whose research in the United States in Italy ultimately paved a way for its clinical use in China. Thymosin alpha-1 is a peptide biologically derived from a protein called prothymosin alpha, which is a ubiquitously found protein that, since its discovery in 1984, in which it was isolated from the rat thymus, it's been considered controversial and elusive. Its role in immunology was initially more unclear, albeit its wide presence in different types of mammalian cells. And as the years have gone by, it's actually become a compound of clinical interest as it's a precursor to a peptide that is 72 amino acids shorter called thymosin alpha-1, which is the purpose of this video. And you'll oftentimes see it referred to as T-alpha-1 or just T-A-1 for those who don't want to speak out the Greek. And interestingly, although thymosin alpha-1 was discovered to be a fragment of prothymosin alpha, T-alpha-1 was isolated and its sequence was later linked to prothymosin alpha, as in, it was discovered before its precursor compound. And this peptide's gained a good amount of clinical and public interest given the array of conditions it's thought to improve, and I think you'll be surprised to see how far it's actually gone in clinical trials. But before we get there, don't forget to like and subscribe as that is the best way to help me out and it does so more than you would imagine. Thank you, I appreciate you all. So thymosin alpha-1, unlike its precursor protein, was derived from the bovine thymic tissue rather than that of the rodent. And with discovery of these thymosin products, it seems that for the most part they're initially isolated from the thymus and then found in different sites and tissues as well. And hence therein stems the idea that these compounds are likely in a way related to immune function given their derivation. This is because the thymus is an organ involved closely within immunoprotection. A key role is in a healthy individual development of lymphocytes is to protect from and fight off antigenic invaders and infections, and thymic involution is a normal process by which the thymus undergoes a progressive physiologic reduction as we age and its mass decreases and it's replaced by fatty tissue. So the presence of this peptide in the thymus is the basis of why the peptides thought to be involved in, quote, modifying, enhancing, and restoring immune function, end quote. And if we think about the prevalence and severity of dysregulation of immune response, there are so many conditions and illnesses in which this is a common theme, from different chromosomal disorders to cancers, autoimmune conditions, sepsis, and many more. Even the recent viral pandemic exemplifies the impact of immune system dysregulation. The immune response itself is a complex and intricate process involving multiple components. There are two broad categories that fall under what's called adaptive immunity. There's the humoral immune response that primarily focuses on the production of antibodies by B cells which target specific antigens on pathogens. In contrast, the cell-mediated immune response, which involves T cells, is crucial for recognizing and responding to infected or abnormal cells, including through the activation of macrophages that help to eliminate pathogens more broadly. And thymus and alpha-1 is thought to trigger components of the adaptive immune response while increasing presence of cytokines that engage the immune system and is thought to operate via interaction with types of receptors that are called toll-like receptors. So instead of making this video a two-hour immunology lesson, which will likely turn into a painfully boring time, let's review the most important of the research, which is hopefully just slightly less boring. First, thymus and alpha-1 shown that it may be involved in regulation of tumor growth, as in rodent models, it appeared to be chemopreventative to lung and breast cancers in mice injected with carcinogens, and it's thought to involve itself with cancerous development via anti proliferative and antioxidant effects. And this peptide's found a way into a vast amount of clinical data involving disorders of the immune system, cancer, hepatitis, and even as a vaccine adjuvant. And in a study that came out of George Washington University, it seemed to enhance the 
efficacy of different vaccines in elderly people, which is pretty darn cool. So there was a pathway to clinical research, which we can get into here. First, physicians looked at the peptide in patients with DeGeorge syndrome, a very severe chromosomal deletion disorder in which people are born with minimal to no thymus, alongside a myriad of genetic defects, which in some patients showed improvement in lymphocyte function. That said, the clinical course and outcome of these patients is oftentimes very unfortunate. This did show some immunologic improvement in somebody who's for the most part, immunologically not functioning. After pharmaceutical company Hoffman LaRoche investigated the peptide in the context of non-small cell lung cancer in 42 patients over the course of a year after reception of radiation treatment, and the results showed an improvement in relapse-free survival. It additionally seems to have improved some of the numerical measurements of T-cell levels and markers that were diminished by radiation therapy. Also, notably, this company Hoffman LaRoche undertook that vaccine efficacy study we mentioned a minute or so ago. Next, an Italian company called Sclavo, if I'm pronouncing that remotely correctly, took a look at melanoma and other types of cancers with visualized general improvement in immune function. However, it doesn't appear to have gained clinical traction, especially given the company's overtaken by Novartis ultimately, and now that it currently ceases to exist. The Italian market was subsequently taken over by a company called Sigma Tau that investigated the compound in the context of melanoma and hepatitis C. The trial evaluating melanoma treatment and combination therapy did show promise as the control group's average survival was 6.6 .6 months and the experimental group that received thymus and alpha-1 and interferon alpha showed an average survival time of 10.2 months. This company's hepatitis trial also did show promise and appeared to be generally well tolerated. Next, stateside, Alpha One Biomedical essentially took over Roche's license on the product and began to research it on hepatitis B, which alone, but especially in combination therapy, has shown among the most beneficial managements of virological response in this trial. On top of that, another company with a really cool name called Cyclone, but spelled with a SCI in the front, overtook some of the research on hepatocellular carcinoma and hepatitis. And it wasn't looked at many hepatocellular carcinoma patients, but it was evaluated in those late stage patients as an adjunct to a TACE procedure. TACE stands for transarterial chemoembolization, which is intended to extend quality of life in an otherwise non-surgical candidate. And of the 25 patients enrolled in the trial, 14 in the TACE plus thymus and alpha-1 group did not show an overall survival time. And of the 25 total patients enrolled in the trial, the 14 that were in the TACE plus thymus and alpha-1 group did show an overall survival time, approximately double the TACE-only group. And four of the 14 in the experimental group became eligible for liver transplant versus the unfortunate zero in the control group. And given the promising data that's presented itself, the FDA issued an orphan drug approval to thymalfacin branded as Zidaxin, for treatment of malignant melanoma, chronic active hepatitis B, and DeGeorge anomaly with immune defects as well as in hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, Zidaxin is synthetic thymosin alpha-1. Now, its approval as an orphan drug means that it was indicated for management of rare conditions, such as the ones we listed, particularly conditions that affect less than 200,000 people in the United States. And Zidaxin is the name of the product that was developed by Cyclone, cool name, pharmaceutical which, as should be clarified, is a U.S.-based company with a focus in China, hence why when you go on Cyclone.com, it'll be in entirely not English. Now, other relevant findings include a possible contribution to lower causes of mortality and sepsis, postulations about benefit in autoimmune conditions like psoriatic arthritis, and an augmentation of immunity in patients with HIV. And although the topic would benefit from increased clinical research, the peptide shown some early promise and restoration of lymphocyte production in patients with this pandemic virus that shall not be named. However, a more recent meta-analysis of the nine collected studies exhibited that with regards to mortality rate, there was no observed benefit of any significance in these patients who received thymus and A1, and judging by the data, it seems to show a particular promise in a myriad of different conditions, perhaps not as a monotherapy, but rather as an injunctive treatment to medications or procedural intervention in enhancement of immune response regulation, such as what the research on vaccines, hepatitis, and even in the small trials evaluating hepatocellular carcinoma and melanoma have shown in a way so far. Now, given the subcutaneous injection route, the most observed effects are local site irritation 
irritation. And although generally well tolerated, there are some instances of more systemic effects like fever, fatigue, muscle aches, gastrointestinal upset. I can't find many clinical contraindications with exception of people being on immunosuppressants like people who have received an organ transplant. Since these people are on these immunosuppressants for life due to the risk of rejection and severe consequences of such, and so messing with immunomodulatory function would be a not smart call. Final thoughts, so this is incredibly interesting, and of the thymusins, in my opinion, the most interesting. Definitely something that if were to be utilized should be done so along a physician. So the data is interesting and seems to really hone in on assisting enhancement of the immune response in a few of these more rare life-altering conditions. So, although there's not much of it being used clinically in the public eye, I do wonder if it has helped many a person. It does appear to be predominantly used in China, albeit not much today, stateside at least, but that doesn't mean it's done being evaluated for different types of cancers and immune conditions, and clinical trials are still going on now. Now, I do think some of the quote-unquote promising data should be observed cautiously with regards to these more understudied topics, like sepsis and viral illness, because not only are the results limited and controversial, controversial, but in an otherwise healthy person, a revved up immune response in a regulated manner is healthy. All these studies were done on people who are very, very ill. And oftentimes when that immune response becomes dysregulated, it is for an underlying reason that doctors can help treat, not to mention that attempting to take your own intricate immunology into your own hands. When we don't really know how this peptide even operates mechanistically, it is worth some caution. That said, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you're still awake for the conclusion. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. If you didn't, dislike. You can still subscribe if you want. I won't hate you. And if you're looking for a way to further support the channel, the link to the Patreon that has more videos and topics of conversation will be in the description as well. Have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence-based, pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy.